this is our project today. Jack going it. The old Trans Um I, tr I programmed it the other day with my HP tuners, which was already a set program. And I heard the fuel pump will cycle. Fuel pump. Will <laughs> fuel pump cycle once, and then I didn't. So, lo and behold, I am. 78% sure the fuel pump went out of it for the third time third time and uh, I did myself a favor <laughs> and this time I know where I bought it from and it has a lifetime warranty I called three or four shops I get stuff from and uh, apparently I ordered it offline and I it didn't have a lifetime warranty so that's that's what I got going for me um, these cars here, they can be a bear to uh, do the fuel pump. It's obviously in the tank. And this little burger just happens to be right above the rear differential, which means in order to do this thing the correct GM way, I guess. Is that how you want to say it? If it's windy and you can't hear this, sorry. <laughs> Let me get out of the wind just to scooch here. So anyway uh to do this the right way you're supposed to you know dislocate the rear suspension and lower the exhaust or take it off and it's supposed to take you about three and a half hours spoiler alert there's an access panel cut in this one already so that's absolutely what i'll be using if you don't know what an access panel is it's something that they should have put on these cars from the factory my IROC has one, this one has one, and pretty much any GM F body that I own will have this access panel. Because if not, it's three and a half hours of just, well, it was my first time. I was a bit inexperienced, young, and just felt like not taking all that stuff off. But I did. You bend the neck and then you can't get it bent right. And anyway, so, I saw somebody had cut one in this IROC that I have. They cut one in the green Trans Am I had, which is probably in one of the uh, cars that you see in the preview there in the intro. And I ain't gonna lie, where I've done these the right way, and this is my actually personal car. Um, I wouldn't do this to a customer car, but this is my car. I don't plan to ever sell it. If I do sell it, they will know it has an access panel because I don't care. It's it's for me. <laughs> um, this will cut off like uh, a bunch of aggravation, broken bolts, you name it. It's gonna cut off a lot of time by adding this or uh, cutting it in, however you wanna say it. But you gotta be careful too, because your fuel tank is right there. I use the Sawzall, um, and uh, hopefully you don't have any leaks, so. Uh, you could cut your fuel lines in half, you could cut into your gas tank, sparks fuel equals boom. That's not good. So uh, anyway, if I just cut it real shallow, I can try to show you a little bit. I cut it at an angle. I'll show you whenever I get in there. But uh, anyway, we're going to show you how to diagnose for a fuel pump. Um, if you don't have a fuel pressure gauge, you're gonna need one. You just can't take the line off like, I don't wanna say any names, but my best bud, Travis Ralph's. Um, and say, yeah, it shot three feet. I haven't figured up the math exactly yet on that. Three feet equals like um, 42 PSI, maybe? Depending on how fast it come out, maybe. I, I don't know, I'll have to ask him. Maybe he'll comment on this video. But um, anyway, let's get started. And uh, I'll show you where to hook up roughly on your fuel pressure gauge. and. If you don't have one, you're gonna need one, borrow one, rent one from AutoZone or wherever. But if you're gonna piddle on these things, you might as well have the tools. And uh, if not, hopefully somebody else does. Let's get started on this. All right, guys. So this is a fuel pressure gauge. Make sure it's always zeroed out before you start because if not, you're not getting a good reading. 
and generally you'll find uh, of course the king of bad lighting um right there we go looky there you can even see it this time on the end this is your fuel rail it hooks to your injectors it'll have this little cap on there just screws on like a valve stem but all you do is just screw that right on there and uh you'll have to have the keys of course and that's not the right ones and i mean something could have happened to this fuel pump i've had the uh lines blow off inside the tank it just i can't even hear this one engage anymore so now you don't have to crank to start you should hear it there and then come out here and hopefully as you see we have 40 psi 40 psi i don't believe is enough to make this old puppy start i think it's at least this one runs in the range of yeah this one runs in the range i believe of 58 58 58 63 or something see it doesn't even go up and that that indicates to me fuel pump l poopy so i'm going to uh oh look a magical jack just reappeared how'd that happen spoiler alert that's where you're going to need to go if you do have this access panel um because you got to unplug it the fuel pump i'll show you where but um Nonetheless, you unplug it from there. It's just easier to show you. I'm just going to go ahead and show you. I should have mentioned before, make sure you dislocate one of the terminals, positive or negative, before you start into this and tear into the actual fuel pump part. I've raised it. Now, do yourselves a favor, guys and gals. Always use a jack stand. I mean, if you don't take anything from hardly anything that I do, safety, 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 safety. There's no reason in dying and replacing our daggone fuel pump. Now, let's see. Okay. Right there. Just locate that little fella. These, let's see, I think you, yeah, you pull this red thing out of there first, lift up. Dislocate. Dislocate. Now. I must have to, do I have to do that? No. Yes, no, no. That runs all across. Okay, so these are all the ones for the fuel pump. This is for your EVAP system, which, you know, is magical. But those two right there. And we'll pull those up at top whenever we replace the whole fuel pump center and all so give me a few seconds i'm gonna pop the trunk show you the secret access panel and uh we'll go back from there all right so this is my access panel i mean it's cut pretty i think pretty good yes i do bend it up out of the way and you're going to have to see that little notch there you're going to need that at least for these older models to get to these fuel lines right here so you just unplug the fuel pump right there and these you can usually squeeze with your fingers just push down right here where it's see that there's a little tab right here usually push down like that pull back at the same time and usually what happens is see it has these little teeth that catch focus take a good look see come on now anyway has a little collar right in here so if you push down here it expands the teeth beyond the collar and if you push down a pull if you push down a pull if you're happy and you know it what in the world we're over there it's it's like right there there we go. Easy peasy. 
just like that. Now these little buggers, they're a little bit more tricky then. One, because they're all the way down in this hole here. Yeah. But that's my Australian. Hope you enjoyed that accent, that's free. So, let's see here. On these here, you push down on these two outer plastic edges and you push that way. I usually squeeze on these with needle nose pliers and then just try to give it a little shove with a flathead screwdriver and they usually come right off pretty easily. So that's why I'm gonna give it a whirl. And unfortunately I can't do it with one hand so I'll just have to show you the uh, aftermath. So I forgot to tell you, this locking flange here, it's different on different cars, but this is held in by one, two, three, four, five, five sixteenths bolts. So then take this clip up. Now pull it up real gently. Why? I don't know. I just say it's like the right thing to say. Because everything's going to get in your way on this sucker. You're going to love it. Come on now. What are you doing? And they're put in at somewhat of an angle. I gotta pull up these convenience wires. Come on now. Get out of there. Come on. Come on, look at that. If I just can't. Looky there, come on now. And it sets in at an angle going back this way. So you gotta take it out the opposite way. And the good thing of it is this fuel pump, it's like three times bigger than what it needs to be, but it has that spring on it. And the spring, sometimes, hey. And the good thing of it is, this bad boy is going to stink up your car since you left your fuel tank in. Well, if you just let me... Don't be like that. So what I'm going to do now is go out the back of the car. Take this dirty thing out of here and try not to get too much gas all over the interior. I would suggest going through the car. You know, it's, it's your own personal preference. You can do whatever you'd like. Pull those wires up. And there you go. There's the whole fuel pump tank assembly. That's a little cruddy. But anyway, there it is. <laughs> As you can see, it's pretty daggone new. I might keep this, I'd say I will, and probably just look for another pump and keep this as a backup because this was not, this sucker wasn't even a year old, I don't think. And like I say, I can't remember where in the world I ordered it from, but she's just, she just ain't got to, oh, it's a Delphi. Well, okay. I almost ordered one of those. And, but like I say, I am a, I'm the king of bad parts. If there's a bad part out there, I'm probably gonna find it. Delphi's the more expensive pump. So we're just gonna run in town, get another fuel pump, drop it back in the same way and see what we got. So we ran into town and got our fuel pump and this one is a, uh, believe it or not, this is a lifetime warranty one and it's true grade never heard of the critter but i mean it looks about the same oh well, there's a new seal i'll put that on but i mean the good thing is it has all these little protectors and no dirt or whatever gets in there and uh you always want to compare them 
And see, one thing I don't like already is this strainer is just chintzy. But, you know, we gotta put a plastic boot on the, not there, because for whatever reason. But you wanna compare your electrical connection ends. That's a two, that's a two. Those two, or those two. And then you got this critter. And that one. So we're good. I'm gonna throw him in there after I take this off. Make sure you take all these things off. And we zip tied it because you can't be too safe about dirt getting on the float or something. I don't, I don't know how that works. But anyway. Um, so there's how she's all connected. We're going to hope this one lasts more than a year. And if it doesn't, you know, I'll just replace it again, I guess. But, um, a little but, FYI, whenever you dislocate those fuel lines down there, if you don't, um, bleed off the fuel pressure, let me show you how to do that. If you have, if you have a good gauge, I don't, I have a cheap one, but still, um, there's a little button right here. And what that allows that to do is bleed off. See how mine's down to zero? It would have been down to zero anyway because where I disconnected the line back there. But if you push, take this little hose right here, stick them outside the car and press that. Um, you know, like I was saying earlier, uh, I'm guessing 36 PSI is around three foot, according to my buddy Travis. Don't want to throw no names out there, but... Apparently that's about right because I paced it off and it was right at about 39 and we're at 36 inches Give or take an inch or two So we're, we're gonna say 12 inches equals 12 psi It sounds likely I mean it, it It could work right so I'm gonna throw this bad boy in here And just like I took it out uh, it's going to go in right like that. Use that hinge to your advantage. It does bend on this one. Thank goodness. Because if it didn't, I mean, they're all seven kinds of fun. But I'm going to get this bad boy in here. I can't do it, you know, with one hand. So then we'll go back up there, test the PSI, see how many fuel pressures we're looking at. And that should fix it. All right. So we got this thing all buttoned up. All the bolts are in it. Didn't have any extra parts yet. Um, no FYI, you get what you pay for. This pump was like 205 bucks. This return line has, uh, they saved money where they could. So within that return line and the little electrical connections, I didn't really like the way the uh, safety clips is what I'm gonna call it. Uh, plug in underneath here. But it's always important. Those little red things right there. Those, make sure you put those in. I mean, because if you're sliding all over the road like Duke's Hazard, it would be kind of goofy to me if you didn't put those things in. And one thing I always do is first, first let me give a shout out to Ski. You're delicious call that stuff Wellston water where I'm from because they used to make it in Wellston my grandpa used to work for him a lot of people I know used to work for him but now you're ready to test out this master fuel pump that hopefully has magical deliciousness for this car to run just tighten her down now we're keeping our fuel gauge hooked up and we're going to see um I believe what I read was 44 PSI key on engine off and then 52 to 58 running 55 somewhere in there yeah going it and of course oh there it is in the deepest part of my pocket now hopefully we hear that sucker and don't see it working you know what I mean like spraying up and all and let's see what we got out here we have what in the world 
that's not that's not great it's all plugged in and we still have a no start situation here going on what in the world is going on here so now Now I don't know what the world's going on because that should have absolutely fixed this problem. And we have even lower PSI than what we had. All right, folks, give me a second. I'm gonna see what in the world happened here. All right, guys, so remember I said you get what you pay for? This is exactly what I'm talking about. This is a brand new out of the box fuel pump it's supposed to be at 44 ish we're at 19 slash 20 now that's key on engine off and i thought maybe it was a battery issue thinking it didn't have enough juice so i hooked up the old booster pack here and nothing um like I say, if you got to cycle the key more than once to get your PSI up, it's not going to run. You might get a little fire for a second and then die, but um, it's not going to work. So I'm going to have to take this sucker back, brand new out of the box. Now, like I said, I am the king, the king of... Uh, getting bad parts and this is just another one to add to the collection and uh you know i i don't know if it's to show you guys that it can happen to anybody i have no idea but it kind of hits me as crazy that i keep on getting these bad ones like i say this is brand new today this is saturday right before easter thought you know what i'll go ahead and get the car running then if it's nice this week which it should be maybe at least one day i mean it's ohio it was 70 here four days ago and it snowed april 1st so that's that's ohio for you i don't know if anybody else's weather's like that but so i guess i'm gonna bite the bullet take this thing back tell them to stick it in the old junk pile and order me the good fuel pump <laughs> and hopefully it's good um luckily for me like I say, I'm not telling you to cut an access panel. I'm not telling you how to, but um, there's videos on that on YouTube, I'm sure, on how to cut an access panel. I just kind of wung it. Uh, if you're going to do it, be careful because you don't cut straight down. See that right there? That's just a little, little area that I, I don't know if you can see it or not. Because I have great lighting as always. But right there, you know, is where I nicked it with the old Sawzall. I definitely would not use a grinder just in case you do have uh, spark issues. So, anyway, I am going to take this part out again. Cover up this hole with something that will uh, not make my car smell so great inside. Maybe a piece of plastic or... Uh, something like that taper down but anyway hopefully the next time you see this we're putting in a good fuel pump and um, we'll hear the bad boy run again howdy that's another video of right turn garage and today we're gonna wrap up the old trans am the old bandito the bandit well I don't know if you guys remember or not, but at the very front of this video, I mentioned that I threw the HP tuners on this sucker, and then that I heard the fuel pump cycle, and then I didn't. I wasn't 100% sure that the fuel pump had went out, but you saw the uh, fuel pressure wasn't there, and I only discovered it because I am just... I, I I love driving this car. This car is an absolute blast to drive. If you get a chance to get you an LS1 car, 
by all means do it they are a heck of a lot of fun even bone stock i mean this thing's got little mods nothing much um but now thanks to my new friends at uh efi performance uh his name was steve i believe it's frost maybe steve frost um i actually googled it thanks to a member on trans am nation on facebook if you like f bodies you like trans ams get on there and get added to trans am nation it's it's great bunch of good guys just love cars and thanks to some of those guys i asked them i said who is the best um for programming ls cars and frost it was the first one that popped up frost performance if you google it it takes you right to it um his packaging whenever he ships his stuff to you says efi performance on it i don't know if i got the box seal on here anyway it says efi performance on it uh he was really good with me he tried to do my computer um but my code come back a po601 and basically it tells me that i just turned my computer into a brick <laughs> um because it's essentially no good and luckily he had one in stock if you are unfamiliar with ls ones and hp tuners hp tuners is a wonderful tuning wonderful tuning however on a 98 trans am camaro corvette and a 97 corvette because that's whenever they were introduced in corvette uh the computers really they wouldn't you gotta know how to tune them um i think this may have been a, a bad on my part i'm not sure but um it, it just there was no recovering it from whatever i had done to it but luckily he had one in stock he sold it to me at a very reasonable price um and he tuned it so i'm very very anxious to see what we got going on i mean I'm, I'm ecstatic just to find out what we got going on so thank you steve and uh efi performance frost tuning transam nation thank all you guys for everything that you did because thanks to you the old bad bird's about to run again um i got the module in and let me tell you these bolts here these ones right here they are a seven millimeter and they do not require a whole heck of a lot of torque okay like this is four foot pounds i know you can't read it but it says four foot pounds i don't think i have a torque bar that goes down to four foot pounds because generally you just don't need them so you don't want to give it you, you don't really want to give it a lot you just want to give it a little not not a little you don't you know that's from my buddy derek over at vice group garage derek i'm a huge fan um but he calls it ooga doogas i believe you don't want to go ooga doogas on this you only want to go eh, t -t -t -t. nothing big so that's on these here there's two generally two 10 millimeter bolts but apparently i've dropped one somewhere along the line yeah, so uh, like I said, it's got one 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter bolt there uh, that you have to take out. Uh, these top parts here, of course that's the bottom, where they plug in, uh, then you want to put on directly on and you don't want to force it. It has little teeny tiny, uh, they might be brass, copper, I'm not sure. Um, little, th little things that, I mean, they attach to the computer to the wiring harness and they are not tough they are not tough at all you know them things on your ac you know you just brush your fingers across it and they bend real easy it kind of reminds me of one of those um like your old window units and stuff made of aluminum <laughs> yeah they bend real easy and if you bend them they ain't worth a darn but anyway um we're going to fire his puppy up. I just wanted to show you a few things. These are also marked. So you cannot put them in the wrong spot. In fact, I wish I... Oh, shoot. I got ahead of myself. Anyway, on both sides of this PC and this computer, it's marked. And it says red on the top side 
and or red on the bottom side blue on the top side and then accordingly there's a blue piece of plastic on this and a red one on this so they line up but like i say line it all up finger thread that bolt through you know don't force it on there don't pat it don't hit it don't do any of that stuff just finger tighten it and then just a little uh, t -t -t -t. not ooga doogas um but just just a little bit as soon as you feel it be just a little bit snug i'm gonna say that's good because that's what i did with that one and uh here in a, here in a minute we're gonna see if she starts What's that you say? Oh, you like that hat? Oh yeah, does that match? I don't know. Anything you see here? I mean like, look, just, just look at it. Oh, hold on. Let me shut the hood here. Does that remind you? Maybe, like it was setting, maybe right in this exact spot. Well, let me tell you, that's because I'm fortunate enough to have my lovely Kristen. She made me this hat. And it's actually of this car with her Cricut. Them things are pretty amazing. I mean, I've got one made with this car. Um, I'm going to make some more. I got one for the old 69. Um, of course, the one that I have has a nose on it. That one obviously doesn't, but you get it. I mean, it's just a little motivation. But anyway, we're going to give it a sucker a crank and see what we got. And by the way, I'm 100% sure she's going to run. So I went ahead and dislocated the fuel pressure gauge. I don't have any worries that this thing will not run. Thanks to EFI Performance. this thing doing? Is it recording even? What in tarnation? Just like that, she's purring like a kitten. Right there's your ECM, guys. That's where that goes. See all this daggone pond? But we'll get it off of there. Like I say, guys, don't ever, ever just give up. If somebody says, if you don't know what something is, you probably shouldn't be messing with it, just look at them and tell them, the old crazy cooter told you that's full of crap. Because this right here, I didn't have any idea what I was doing whenever I did this LS swap. I'm not kidding you. This used to be a V6 3.8 automatic. And there's still probably one more catch to her. I'm uh, more than likely I'm going to do a six feet swap on it as well. But, like I said, she originally, if I can get an angle on it, was a v6 i did it right there right in this where i got gravel on the daggone concrete right here i did it with no more than a cherry picker jack stands and a jack that's all i did it with um don't let anybody tell you you shouldn't be doing something if you're messing up you're probably doing something i messed up a half dozen times while doing this car don't ever, ever get discouraged. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, give me a holler. I'll be more than happy to, more than happy to have you. <laughs> more than happy to help you in any way I can. Because that's what this channel is all about. I'm trying to get everybody interested in fixing their own rides. I mean, stuff's expensive anymore. I can't afford all these cars and stuff with, without me doing it. There ain't no way. But I mean, this right here just puts a smile on dad's face. So thank you, Mr. Frost, Steve, EFI Performance, Transam Nation. Thank you guys. Thanks to you, the bird, she lives again. So this is me, Right Turn, Garage TV. 
saying it just got better. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a good weekend.